In this episode of The Biggest Jesus, we'll see why it's good news that Satan and Hitler are saved, and we'll see one of the amazing results of their salvation. Christianity says Jesus will torment billions of people forever. That's a long time, and that's a long time. Don't swallow their lies or their tiny Jesus. Biggestjesus.com Yeah, size matters. First off, let's look at how Satan and Hitler and the rest of humanity are saved. Let's take a look at Colossians 1, 15 through 20. Speaking about Jesus, who is the image of the invisible God, firstborn of every creature. For in him is all created, that in the heavens and that on the earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or lordships or sovereignties or authorities, all is created through him and for him. And he is before all, and all has its cohesion in him. And he is the head of the body, the ecclesia, who is sovereign, firstborn from among the dead, that in all he may be becoming first. For in him the entire complement delights to dwell, and through him to reconcile all to him, making peace through the blood of his cross, through him, whether those on the earth or those in the heavens. We can see clearly from this passage, starting in verse 16, in him is all created, that in the heavens and that on the earth. All is created through him and for him, highlighted there in the yellow. He is before all, verse 17, and all has its cohesion in him, speaking of Christ. In verse 18, that in all he may be becoming first. And finally in verse 20, through him to reconcile all to him, making peace through the blood of his cross, through him, whether those on the earth or those in the heavens. So he created all, all was created through him and for him, and all was reconciled by him. And that is the how in the blue, making peace through the blood of his cross. Jesus' work on the cross reconciled all that he created, including Satan, including Hitler, including you. And here is that amazing result of the work that Jesus did on the cross. Wherefore also God highly exalts Jesus and graces him with the name that is above every name, that in the name of Jesus every knee should be bowing, celestial and terrestrial and subterranean, and every tongue should be acclaiming that Jesus Christ is Lord for the glory of God the Father. We see very clearly that God graces him with the name that is above every name. That includes Satan, that includes Hitler, that includes you and me, that in the name of Jesus, every knee should be bowing. So every name that Jesus is over will be bowing. Celestial and terrestrial and subterranean. No one is excluded from this group. And we see in verse 11, and every tongue should be acclaiming that Jesus Christ is Lord. So we see very clearly that this is an all-encompassing passage telling us that Jesus is above every name and every name underneath him will be bowing and acclaiming that Jesus Christ is Lord. Celestial and terrestrial and subterranean. If you can find a celestial being or a human that is exempt from every knee and every tongue and every name, let me know. I want to look a little closer at verse 11 where it says every tongue should be acclaiming that Jesus Christ is Lord. Many popular Bible versions have confessing or confess instead of the word acclaiming. And this word confess or confession gives us a very negative connotation as it causes us to think of confessional in Catholic Church or anytime you confess something as a criminal, it carries a, a very negative weight. Now, I'm not a former Catholic, but I've heard enough about confessionals to know that it's not something that is done typically, 
not done wholeheartedly. It's something that is done reluctantly, out of duty, and in a sense forced to do. Every tongue that acclaims Jesus will do it for the glory of God the Father. But there's such a thing called lip service. And that's how I used to see this as it was a forced confession by God putting people in a hammerlock. But let's take a look at what Jesus said to those that gave him lip service in uh, Matthew 15, 7 through 9. These are the religious leaders that were opposing him. He said, hypocrites. Ideally, Isaiah prophesies concerning you saying, this people with their lips is honoring me. Yet their heart is away at a distance from me, yet in vain are they revering me. So if it's just with the lips, without the heart, a true heart acclamation or confession, then that does not bring glory to God at all, because that means that person's heart is far from them. But what that does tell us is that somebody that acclaims Jesus to the glory, for the glory of God the Father, their heart is in line with God. Their heart has been changed by God. So that tells us that Satan's heart, Hitler's heart, your heart, my heart, everyone's heart is going to be changed so that they will freely acclaim that Jesus is Lord for the glory of God the Father. We see an example of Jesus using the word acclaiming in Luke 10, 21. In this hour, Jesus exalts in the Holy Spirit and said, I am acclaiming thee, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for thou dost conceal these things from the wise and intelligent, and thou dost reveal them to minors. Yea, Father, seeing that thus it became a delight in front of thee. So we see that the word acclaim is from the Greek eximologio, and the ek is, means holy out from, homologio means say the same thing about. So in a good sense, it is confession, but because the word confession carries such a negative connotation, we can see it as a forced confession, which oftentimes you'll hear about in uh, police interrogations. But this is not a forced confession as Jesus is freely acclaiming his father for something his father has done. And we see further down in the definition, properly, it means to fully agree and to acknowledge that agreement openly, wholeheartedly. Hence, to confess, openly declare, without reservation no holding back. So we see that it is wholehearted. Now, if Satan and Hitler are wholeheartedly acclaiming Jesus, that means, as we said just a little bit ago, that their hearts have been changed by God. All of this is good news for you and me, all celestial beings, all terrestrial beings, because Jesus has reconciled all that he created through the blood of his cross. That means there's more than enough grace, not only for you and for me, regular sinners, but even for the worst among us. Satan is the worst celestial sinner. Hitler is one of the worst sinners in the realm of humanity. So these two extremes we can take and say, if God has enough grace for them, and he has reconciled them through the blood of Jesus' cross, then there is not only hope for you and for me and for all humanity and all celestial beings, but there is a guarantee of salvation through the work of Christ for each and every one of us.